Welcome back to No More Heroes, Travis Strikes Again. We'll be finishing the first level of the uh, game today, thankfully. The first level is kind of long-winded. It's a little annoying in that regard. This is all part of the first level? Yeah. Good God. Oh, so it's like acts in a zone. Okay. Yeah. And thankfully, whenever you get back to it, whenever you want to go back to a level, you can start from any checkpoint. Oh, well, that's a good feature, I think, especially if you're trying yeah. to find collectibles and Hidden stuff. Hidden stuff. Yeah. I will say that I, I mean, I, mind you, you would still you would still need to figure out where they were. So, okay. if, you do, if you're playing if you're playing it blind, you're probably just playing through the level entirely anyway. But I will say that this game actually is. I do like the graphics in this area, like the neon on the on the wet ground and stuff like that. Like I do think that you know, even though this game is definitely going for art style rather than specifically trying to impress technically, there is still some tech stuff in here that I think looks pretty nice. So, like, the lighting from my, what I can see in this looks really good, so I would like to to give the game some props. There we go. So, are those, like, horribly mutated versions of that tree Pokemon? Uh, those are Suicide Bombers. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think Sudowoodo was the same thing, yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... Oh, but Sudowoodo wasn't a tree, though. He was a rock. Um, so wait, can you walk on the points where the ground is yeah. glitchy? Okay. Yeah, it, it's just the game bugging out. <laughs> Alright. Oh, so I would have taken it as a floor yeah, hazard. Same. Yeah, it, it, it's not entirely clear, but it's not a big deal. It's You can walk on it just fine. This is one of those things you find out by accident. Yeah. It's like, oh, wait, that's... Well, I think you'll get the I'm idea okay. that they're fine because the enemies are on top of them. <laughs> I'm invincible! Do you get different swords in this? Nope, just the one. Just the one, okay. And do you still have to masturbate to charge it up? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it wouldn't be No More Heroes without it. No, it looked like, from what I've seen earlier, he just flicks his wrist once. That's about it. Well, the animation is less pronounced because you're in an overhead view. Here's right. my question. If shaking the sword is what charges it up, why doesn't it just charge while you're swinging it? Uh... <laughs> Um, he knows too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so another question. What does finding the grandpa dude do? He spews sagely wisdom. Okay. Like, why do today when you can put off till tomorrow and the day after tomorrow stay up all night? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's got a point there. Oh, is this one of those games that has, like, secrets yes. and a inconspicuous pixel of <laughs> sort of yeah the, 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 yeah. the game the game tells you about it though oh does it every time you beat a level you get a effectively like an egm article about it i'm not joking about that <laughs> that you can look up and it shows you vaguely where it is and you have to input the okay. secret code and then the thing pops out huh a vague area of where it's at, but you so have it, to... It, no, you get, you get a screenshot of exactly where it is, but the problem is, is the joke is that it's, a, it's an old 90s magazine, so its quality is degraded to shit. <laughs> oh. uh, like the kind of stuff that you would see, that you only see nowadays if you watch Guru Larry videos and stuff. Okay. More or less. Uh, I, I make sure to show them off at the end of this part once you beat the level. But if you know where they are beforehand, you can get them. You can just do it, yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's, I, I like it. I, I like it when games do that. It's kind of like, you know, how in Symphony of the Night or in or uh, Ritual of the Night as well. Ritual of the Night does this too. Where, you know, how they have special moves and spells and you're supposed to find books throughout the uh, game that tell you what the button combination is. You can buy them from the library. Yeah, yeah, you're supposed to find books that can tell you what the button combinations are. But if you already know them or looked them up, you can just do them. <laughs> And it adds them yeah. to your list once you've done them once. I always found it weird in that context. Like the library is like, hey, did you know you do this? I did not know I can already do this. Thank you. Why am I paying you again? Uh, so that's actually something, you know, fantastic game. But Mario Odyssey, you can't get the picture hidden thingies unless if you look at the picture beforehand. Which yeah. always bugged me. Because, <laughs> what, did looking at the picture make Bowser hide that moon underneath the ground or whatever? No, I think the, the implication is that it's Poochie who takes the moons and oh, buries, them. It, buries them there. Yeah, so it's like, I, I guess the justification was that if you get to that moon beforehand, Poochie, hasn't Poochie didn't there bury yet. there yet. 
yeah, so, yeah, so that's why you can't yeah, do it. I mean, granted, I love Super Mario Odyssey, but that's like the one point where I'd be like, if I know this is here, why do I have to examine the thing in level eight just to get this moon in level two? Good photo, photo validation. Also, every time I try to, actually, it was strangely nostalgic when I was playing that game because I kept on having to take screenshots of those hidden pictures in order to like have the reference for them. And so when I was looking at my screenshots, it's just full of these random Mario Odyssey things. And it's just like, this reminds me of whenever I played Mario Galaxy and my Wii mail was nothing but Toad mail saying, here's <laughs> Luigi, Luigi got lost. Oh, the princess sent you five mushrooms, Mario. It's like, wow, okay. That's not something I expected to be reminded of. I don't know if I like it or not. That was basically the only thing that ever happened with like my Wii notifications because like, the Wii as a system, like, they they wanted it to have some sort of social media stuff going on, but did anyone actually use it? Um, <laughs> not really, so, no. Not to, no. Not like, really. could send messages to friends, but uh, that was like, a I, I imagine At that point, like, it was either just to get your phone and send a text. I, I imagine, like, some kids who didn't have access to other methods of uh, social media, like, communicated with their neighbors like neighborhood friends or maybe they're like their phones or let their phones well i know i know some i know some parents like hold off letting um their kids uh get involved in social media until they're older my dad does that with my half sister but um responsible parenting um i remember it's not the wii but the ds i actually used the picto chat a decent bit so oh in school yeah for people in like neighboring classrooms yeah um I know that you could actually send gifts of WiiWare and virtual console games over the Wii mail, so that's actually a decent feature. But for the most part, I really only used it for, like, seeing, like, the gameplay time. Like, because they yeah. did have a, a tracking device. Uh, Beta64 did a really interesting video on, like, the history of the Wii's UI. Apparently, at some point, like, Awada wanted a parental lock on the system that would make it so that it could turn off immediately after an hour or something like that. But uh, they didn't know how to do that other than setting a timer that would like hard shut the system down and that would be bad. Yeah. <laughs> so the only way that they were able to get something resembling that is to have a gameplay list on the Wii, on the Wii mail that the parents could look at and then nag their kid about how much time they spend playing video games. Also, I feel like it would be a really bad idea because a lot of parents don't understand concepts like game saving. Uh, I'm thinking back to when I was first playing Final Fantasy VIII on the PlayStation back in the day, and my dad did not know um, what saving the game meant because he was an Atari kid and doesn't think of video games as anything more complex than Atari. Um, so, basically, I lost three fucking hours of uh, of progress because he was very insistent that I shut the game off now he and wouldn't let me go. Three hours. I was going through the whole like <laughs> Dalit. I was in the mood. I, I, I was going through the whole like Dalit opening mission, and I I had really only played for three hours. You see, so um, I was having fun and hadn't saved, and I had to shut the game off right now because he was very insistent that I shut the game off right now, so I had to play through all of that again. <sighs> well, thankfully, the generation now and above won't have you this much of an issue think. because a lot of... I, I would I, I think it's a safe assumption because a lot of parents of today, especially like new parents, are our generation. They that's understand that's scary to think. That's, I know it's children. scary to think, but that's, no, that's, it's just that's like not good. that's not necessarily that, it's, it, that's not necessarily even enough to make it a safe bet that they know what they're talking about when it comes to video games. Well, I, it's more. But likely I would that also they think that doing, they would be they would know what they're they, they at least are having more willing to understand. Yeah, because I, I you know, rather least, it's like, I feel like most people our age have at least played a video game. If only like Pokemon or something like that, and understand that yeah. you have to save, you know, the file before it ends. Yeah. My my point is, even if even if like there is a chance, a, a better chance that they'll understand, there's a non, there's a there is a 100% chance that there is still a significant number who don't and aren't willing to, and I think giving them a way to, um. Uh, impose 
that non-understanding on their chill on their children in a very intrusive way is functionally useless and not very smart at all like basically if you were to if you were to implement a function in a console that hard shut it off in the middle of play because an arbitrary time limit was reached and the parent didn't want to consider letting their kid play for five more minutes so they could save their game. Basically, well, there, are, there are still there are parental things like that, but from what I can tell, like the Nintendo parental uh, thing, it just puts it into sleep effectively, and it suspends it yeah. rather than just shutting it off. Shut because the we game can off. Do that yeah, now. you don't have to just shut the entire game off. You know, right. You know, we can suspend things now. Well, which I mean is, which which is, is good. also I mean, good because even if you have parents that don't understand, you can just you know put it in home and leave yeah, it. Be, yeah. Exactly. But unless you're playing you, you, on my, if you're playing an RPG, mom, you don't have to worry about. I'm doing this Final Fantasy 14 raid. Well, well, like I mean, don't have to worry about losing saves. Sleep mode may not be as trustworthy as a as, as a game save that you can load at any time, but it is effectively saving your progress. I mean, that's how I beat Sonic Spinball back in the day, effectively. I just, we had to go somewhere, and I was on the final stage, so without just leave it on. without yeah. telling my father, I left it on and just shut the television off. <laughs> oh, I've done that plenty of times. <laughs> went close to your genesis. And, and then when I when I got home, I finished the secret. game, and it was really... It, I'm, pretty I, sure, I'm pretty sure that's happened plenty of times, because I don't think any kid in the 80s actually beat Ghosts and Goblins in one real sitting. You know, they definitely turned that crap off. I've done it with Final Fantasy VI growing up. It was in the middle of a dungeon. I had to go to school. Don't want to turn the game off because I'm already an hour in. <laughs> so just going to leave it on for now. Um, so In Dragon Quest VIII, like, when you go to the stats menu, um, occasionally King Trode, who's one of the characters in the game, who follows you around, he's like this little green troll guy. He, like, he'll make sassy comments about stuff, and if you take too long to beat the game and you're at, like, 100 hours by the end, one of the things he'll say is, you're not leaving the console on overnight while you <laughs> are you. So, yeah, that's a thing. Uh, also, let's be honest, that's all how we unlocked Mewtwo and Melee. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, one, uh, four people, all in a one-stock match, no time limit. And then when you wake up... Uh, like four, f f four people? Four, four controllers. controllers. <laughs> that's for real. None of us had friends growing up. <laughs> um, four controllers? Who actually owns four controllers? As a kid, you know, siblings. as a kid, I mean, I didn't. Oh, but yeah, I had I had siblings. So. Oh well, I have two. I have, I have two sisters, and I had friends over, so I had four controllers. I mean, I, I had... ended up owning four, but that's just because my brothers broke two of them. I mean, <laughs> I had siblings too, but only one of them played video games. So <laughs> my sisters played them okay, enough so to warrant getting them. You and your brother would have a main controller and a backup. Four controllers. Bam. Yeah. Well, you, well, no, you, you have the older sibling controller, and you have everyone else's Yeah, controller. I'm not saying that everybody yeah, exactly. had the normal controller. I'm saying you've got two normal ones, and the third one's a Mad Cat. The Mad Cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, can we... Can we eat? I got you one of those GameStop third-party controllers with the analog stick that goes up my ass. <laughs> oh, don't eat... Okay, the analog stick is always a bad point in... In third-party controllers, I have one that's just a stick attached to an eight-directional movement, which is the worst. But isn't that N64? It, it, it's basically a D-pad with an analog stick grafted on. But but the worst thing is, like, I have a third-party PS3 controller, and official PS3 controllers are basically impossible to get now. It's the only thing I have, and the tr the, the triggers, the 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 rearmost shoulder buttons are just the chunkiest, most unwieldiest things ever, and they're set like intentionally way lower on the controller, so you can't just move your index finger to them. You have to like either have both fingers on top of the controller the whole time, which is horribly uncomfortable, or fucking do finger gymnastics with them. Why is well, For the record, this, this black is, screen this, is this, really this, long. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's the game. <laughs> okay, oh. it was like this is, this is okay. a really long black screen. For a second, screen. I thought the part had ended, but but nope. like some. No, the, the game has a few really long load times. So. Like I've I've rendered out a video in the past, and then realized that I left some like cut content way at the end of the timeline, 
uh, after the render was finished, so there was like an hour of black screen at the end. No, those fuzzy screens, you know, the stat TV static are way longer. I cut those out oh. for the most part. Oh, okay. Yikes. Ah, he said the line. He said the thing. Title drop. I'm, a, I'm actually a little surprised that <laughs> I'm actually a, a little surprised that 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 uh, a digital release game of this kind of simplicity has load times of that length, though. Um, it might just be like a like a quirk of the engine or whatnot. What system because... are you playing this well, on? It's only on Switch. Well, I guess at the time it was only on Switch. Uh, I wonder. Wait if it's... a minute. They're they're out of the video game, so they can go back to killing each other, right? Well, now they're just trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Uh Wait, he has a he has a fax machine. Yes. Why? <laughs> Dude's playing his friggin' Sega Genesis in a trailer park. Well, I mean... Okay, yeah, I get playing your Sega Genesis, but I don't get why you have the fax machine. It, it, it... Well, yeah, why would you have a fax machine? You need a phone line for that, don't you? But, like, okay, never mind. Uh, like, <laughs> I, I get why they're hanging around to try and figure out what's going on with the, super, with the clearly supernatural video game console. Because, like, it kind of peeves me off that in, that in some... That in some works of fiction the characters are intentionally like very slow on the uptake when it comes to like figuring out what's going on with the plainly supernatural thing they have going this wait this guy has three monitors and he's running windows 2 what <laughs> <Yes>. the <laughs> <laughs> no no this is macintosh this oh god is macintosh yeah. oh god i remember it from computer class this is painful. <laughs> Make it go away. Also, I like I did see some official like indie games like yeah. I was like Also, I'm games. sorry. Okay. Uh, Suda 51, I love you, but that is way too high resolution and way too colorful for images displaying on an old Macintosh. Uh, yeah. re regard regardless, there are things like Hollow Knight t-shirts. Apparently, the initial base idea was to make all the levels based off various indie titles. Oh, oh, that would have been interesting. interesting. But between, but Suda basically said between getting all the rights worked out and making it feel true to both No More Heroes and the indie titles, it just wasn't going to work out, so they went with, you know, t-shirts and cool, stuff. We instead. got a Shovel Knight level, like, oh, great, another 8-bit retro indie title. <laughs> but, like, what I was what I was saying about figuring out the plainly... Oh, yeah, here, here, here are the EGM articles. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's pretty oh. authentic looking. Good job. Oh, yeah, that's really authentic. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so, you, so you can see where they are, but they're, like, super low quality. Oh, okay, I like that. Uh, did they do the thing where, like, half the photos were, like, concept work, and the other half were, like, in-development photos that weren't true to the final product? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, about figure... Oh, well, I'll, I'll save this point for next part, because we're about to end this one. Oops. Oh, you, can, oh, oh. you have to change your shirt in the bathroom, because you can't take off your shirt. In front of Batman. <laughs> not not in front of Batman, no. But uh, yeah, yeah. It's the it's the end of part, and thank you all for watching. We'll see you in part four.